The Pulse School on realairculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, DuPont Vertison Fungicide, and Nodulator XL. Okay, Danielle, so a lot of times farmers come onto the field, they look at what's happening above the ground, but specifically with pulse crops, it, th what happens under the ground sort of tells a lot of the story as well. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. Um, we're out at a really advanced field here where it's about to flower, and I wanted to uh, point out this field in particular because we see a lot of the nodule development that we'll have a look at in a minute. Um, really for nodulation assessments, we'll want to start looking, um, you can start anywhere between the three and four node stage, uh, three to four nodes above ground. And that would be an ideal time to start looking at your root development from there. So you'll start to see some nodules on the plant and then we'll have a look at it in a bit. Um, and it's also a really good thing to look at some other things along with it. The roots are really the brain of the plant and the heart of what's really happening with your plant. So it's really good to have a look at your plant root structure to see um, any signs of compaction. If you have some F's curves happening under, under the ground before the plant's actually emerging. And some other things too to evaluate your seed treatment usage. So you might have been using a seed treatment in the past that was only a fungicide based project. If you look and you'll see some signs of um, pea leaf weevils for example, you might want to consider using a combination product with a fungicide and insecticide component going forward. Okay, so we've washed, we've washed off these roots. Yes. Okay, so what are, what are we seeing here? So here we're having a look at some nodulation. So you can see this, uh, this crop is really quite advanced and ready to start flowering here. So we're, you know, we're probably uh, seven, eight nodes plus here. But the important thing is to have a look at the root structure um, with the nodulation. For example, here we have, this is, I know that this field is actually a granular inoculant based product. So you'll see some nodulations right around the seed area, around the crown area, and also along the lateral roots. If you were using an inoculant that was seed applied, so a peat based or a liquid based, you would just expect to see a lot more nodulation right around um, the crown area of the plant. The so is there a way to evaluate based on, you know, yeah. counting how many? Yeah, the, I mean, there has been some work done on that too, but inoculants have changed a little bit too. The most important thing is to be looking for is to make sure that you can have that pinkish hue to your nodules. And that's really um, indicating to a grower that you have active uh, nitrogen fixation occurring. The quantity and the size of them isn't quite as important as it used to be at one point. It's actually the strain effectiveness that's more important, which is a little bit harder for a grower to evaluate. So making sure that you have bright pink or reddish nodules is the best indicator that a grower can go by. And we've definitely got that here. Mm -hmm. And so some of the other things too, uh, not on this plant, but if you would have a lot of white um, nodules um, inside that were really large or greenish or grayish, that can indicate a lot of different things. So for example, it could be a parasitic um, strain or it could have already, uh, it might be an old bacteria by that point and it may have already contributed all the nitrogen that it will to that plant for that given year. So those are some of the things that a grower when you're going out instead of just doing your above field scouting is to dig up and have a look at the nodules and you know your root structure as well and it can tell you a lot of different things that are going on. You might see some signs of some seedling disease, disease along your um, roots as well. And we don't see any sign of that here. No, not in this particular instance, but just some watch outs that growers can check. And you can be looking at uh, multiple different things at one scouting operation. So is there areas of the field that you should be looking at specifically or just kind of? Um, yeah, in terms of uh, nitrogen fixation, and when you're looking, you're doing nitrogen or nodulation assessments, you definitely want to stay away from any field borders and any, uh, any knolls and you want to stay to the level areas of the field too. You want to be going where it's an average it and where there's going to be average nitrogen uh, fixation requirements. So avoiding any of those high lo or low spots in the fields will either, you know, in some cases you might have excess nodules and in some cases you might be lacking nodules. So just picking a really level spot in the field to conduct those assessments would be um, best suited for growers to be picking. How much of the, the plant's yield is dialed in right now? Yeah, in this crop, I mean, it's a fantastic looking pea crop. 
and it's going to be going into the stage where it needs the most nitrogen going forward. So it has a really healthy root system and it's going to be able to access all of the, those nutrients. So, um, you know, no signs of compaction. So even though peas are fairly shallow rooted, they're still going to be, uh, you know, doing their job and accessing what nutrients they can at this point. Um, going forward, it, you know, there's really good yield potential in this field going into the flowering stage um, because with the healthy root development that we see happening in the field. So we're just about to enter flowering. This is the time we should really get out and start looking for disease. Yeah, there's going to, I mean, just with the current conditions in Western Canada right now, uh, you know, there's been lots of disease pressure. So make sure that growers are out there scouting for foliar diseases uh, going forward. It's going to be very important to make sure that they maintain their maximum yield potential. Any particular diseases for 2012 that we're, we're concerned about? Or just the, the whole full realm? The whole, I would say the whole full realm, Sean, at this point. Um, it's uh, just really conducive for a lot of diseases at this point in, in pulses and in all crop kinds in general at the moment. Earlier you had said to me that we want to be looking at the root zone to kind of start to plan for next year, issues we may have or things yeah. we want to consider. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you know, it's really good, you know, here we've got an advanced crop stage, but if you're more, you know, four or five node stage, you can be assessing your nodulation, you know, you can be looking at your plant populations to see, you know, whether you've met your target ratios that you're trying to achieve, uh, looking at compaction, so looking at that root structure, um, looking at your, your seed treatment and evaluating it to see whether that's an appropriate uh, seed treatment for you to use going forward. So it's a lot of things that you can do right now. Uh, as an early evaluation tool for planning into 2013. Okay, so if, I, if I've used uh, um, an inoculum but I'm still not seeing the amount of nodulation or the, the color that I'm looking for in those yeah. nodes, what does that tell me for next year? Yeah, that, there's a lot of, you know, in terms of uh, what you call it a nodulation failure, there can be a lot of different uh, reasons for that too. Um, for example, soil pH will affect nodulation as well as your residual nitrogen that you'll have in the soil. So I say that residual and any that you may have applied as a starter in the springtime as well, you want to limit that soil nitrogen to 20 pounds. So if you have beyond that, that will actually delay your nitrogen fixation as well. Um, there's other things that affect that as well too when you're applying inoculant, knowing that it is uh, living bacteria. Um, you have to make sure that you're handling in a proper manner um, and make sure that you're actually delivering those rhizobia populations to the soil. If you're not, that can have an impact on nodulation as well.